Day three of the NPTE is a really weird day when you are in person. Uh, for those of you who don't know what the NPTE is, which since this channel is mostly random high schoolers, uh, the NPTE is the National Parliamentary Tournament of Excellence, which is one of the two national championship tournaments, because there are two, the NPDA and the NPTE. And the NPTE is a, a qualification tournament, meaning that you have to earn enough points to get a bid. You should use to kind of have to do that nowadays. Who knows? Um, and in a lot of respects, it's viewed as like the most prestigious tournament in college parliamentary debate. Pretty cool tournament. It's got an interesting format, double elimination in the out rounds, and it's got two judges or whatever per prelim. But uh, back to it being weird. Uh, day three of the NPTE, pretty much every other year, because some years the NPTE comes first and NPDA comes second, and this year it's the other way around, NPTE is first. A lot of years, day three of Nats is the last day for a lot of people's careers. And in fact, the reality is that almost every single person ends their career on a loss. Because if you don't win nationals and you attend nationals, you lost at some point. That is how your debate career ended. So very few people end up leaving on a win. And day three, there's only a few Elim rounds. So we're talking like maybe eight teams make it to day three, maybe a little more. I think it's eight. Could be less. And so tons of careers have already ended or seasons at a minimum have ended. And day three in person of the NPTE is, uh, it's like eerie because the halls of whatever school you're at have been super full for the last few days, you know, seeing all your friends from across the nation. But at this point, uh, people who get eliminated usually don't show up. They're not in the best of spirits or they're out partying or they're doing whatever they're doing. And so it's just the teams who've made it to that day and then their squad mates. And I always liked day three of nationals because it seemed kind of cool. It was very quiet uh, around the area. A lot of sad people, a lot of very serious, determined people. But I always remember day three of the APTE, which was the final day of my career because uh, I really wanted to win nationals and spoilers never did. Everyone knows that. Everyone who knows me knows that. And I remember at the end of day two, we knew that in the morning we'd be hitting Berkeley KL and they were the best team in the country and they had just kicked our asses up and down, you know, the country, I guess, for the last two years. And so it was a scary round, but uh, we were very determined. We felt we had the right strategies and that we'd be good there. But I woke up on day three of the NPTE and I got a really nice call from Sasan and he sort of just talked to me. He knew I was kind of in his own and how I was feeling. Just gave me like a really cool speech and I'll kind of leave that for him uh, if he wants to talk about that stuff in the future. And I've talked to some students about it, students I'm particularly close with over the years. But basically, you know, it put me in a good mental state. I got in the van to go to the tournament and Steve turned on. Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. I was losing my mind in the backseat. Ultimately, we won that round. We won a few more and we lost in the semis. Whatever. But uh, I've told a lot of people my biggest regret in my debate career is not that we didn't win nationals. I would love to win nationals, obviously. But the biggest thing that bothered me is that I just so desperately wanted to give thank yous. I really, really wanted my chance to thank everyone who had led me to that point. And um, a lot of people do it on Facebook. I never did. I never posted like a thank you post even when my career ended. And that was in part because I felt like, well, you know, someday maybe like I'll coach a national champion and do something similar or whatever. But to a certain degree, uh, debate doesn't let you say thank you enough. Like unless you go out of your way to do it. I always tried to go out of my way to do it. Uh, but the only people who get to give thank yous really are the people who make the final round because before the final round of the NPDA and the NPTE, they give you some time to say your thank yous and people think about that. Uh, some people think about it too much, maybe a little obsessive. And I don't want to like really go through and reiterate everything I would have said on my thank yous because, you know, I would have talked about the University of the Pacific at that time, would have talked about 
my dad and my family and my, my now wife, all these people who affected me. But I do want to talk about uh, the debate specific people that I would have thanked. And for those of you who will be competing in day three of the NPTE tomorrow, uh, I kind of want to just leave this here. I know a few of you watch this and a few of you know that um, I'm really pulling for you and I care a lot for you. And it's been really fun to watch you. And I'm so happy to see you folks succeed. And so kind of just food for thought in terms of what you might want to think of when you're going to do your thank yous, which I hope uh, you get to, you know, good luck. My thank yous uh, were primarily in terms of debate going to go to people who didn't actually coach me because I was going to thank Sasan. Of course, I was going to thank my late mentor, Tony. I was going to thank Steve. I'm going to thank Dallas, you know, Dom, my teammates, my partners, the people who like have literally been there. But uh, I thank those people a lot. And those people know I'm thankful for them and everything they did. And, you know, I, I'm still very close with them. But there were a few people that I wanted to thank who weren't my coaches. And I think a lot of people end up thanking their coaches, thanking their family. They're Josh Rivera. They think they're city. But uh, there were some people in the debate community who had no obligation to help me at all. Zero obligation to help me to try and see me succeed, but who went out of their way to do so. Uh, and for me, those people were roughly as follows. And there's three main ones. Uh, the first one is Allison Escalante, who at that time was at Oregon and now is at uh, Elko Helping in various capacities. And immediately when my career ended, I went back to the team room and, you know, had a little cry, whatever, talked to the team, thank those people. But right after that, the first thing I did is I went to Oregon's prep room. And I went to Oregon's prep room because Allison and Sean, who's the second person I want to talk about, were, were there. And I just felt that both of these people had been so supportive of me throughout uh, my time at Pacific, whether that was just like hanging out, you know, or in, in stuff like that. But more importantly, I remember Allie on day three of the MPT was just literally in the prep room with us, like helping Pacific because Oregon had already been knocked out. And Allie was just sitting down with me specifically, just helping me with MG prep. And, you know, there was a lot of stuff we, we could potentially expect and so on and so forth. And, and we definitely won at least one round just purely based on cool stuff Allie told me to say. And, you know, it, it was just so cool to have someone who uh, I viewed as like a debate hero at that time helping me because I'd been watching rounds of like Allie from when she was in SEMS uh, the years before uh, against UT Tyler. And I my favorite round ever that I show all my students is Allie and Sean against UT Tyler in Long Beach finals from like 2016 or 2017. Uh, just because uh, Ali and Sean, but especially Ali, were like really, really cool debaters. Like it, it felt like they just talked about stuff that they thought was fun or funny or strategic. And uh, I always thought that that was kind of what I wanted to do. But obviously I went to a school where like, it's not real, like Pacific's kind of rigid to a certain degree, which benefited me a lot. But like we there's you know, there were a lot of like guardrails on what we were doing. And that didn't seem to be the case for Oregon. And I always thought that was cool. So to just have that person there with me, um, meant so much. And so I had to thank Allie. And the second person was Sean McKean, who was in that same room. And Sean had uh, been, of all the people in debate uh, that I met that weren't on my team, Sean McKean was easily one of my closest friends. And I still think of him as a close buddy, even though he's at law school now and doing his thing. And we don't, we don't keep in touch as much. But uh, he was just super supportive because I remember being at Mile High and i had gone with dom because dallas couldn't be there and we just did okay we broke whatever lost to berkeley classic and we were playing like mario kart with zach schneider and sean and i was telling them that i wanted to quit debate i was like i think i'm done like i got everything i wanted out of it i don't think we can win this year i don't think we're good enough to beat berkeley i don't think we're good enough to beat ut tyler or not ut tyler sorry uh, texas tech either at that time and I had so much fun with Dom that weekend, even though we didn't win, that I kind of felt like that would be a good way for me to end my career rather than like going out with the misery of, you know, underperforming at Nats or whatever. And Sean immediately was just like, you're a fucking 
idiot. Like, what are you talking about? Of course you have a chance of winning nationals. And Zach kind of felt the same way. And uh, Sean just was kind of like, Sean, to a certain degree, was like a cheerleader for me. And it was just so cool because he would just message me when we were at tournaments doing well and just check in and we'd hang out all the time, you know, and just, and just have fun and do crazy stuff or whatever. But just like, it just felt like he genuinely cared about my success, even though it in no way benefited him or reflected upon him. He was just a really cool dude. And, uh, kind of as a result of that, when (laughs) he was working with, you know, the, the kids currently at Oregon, uh, I kind of felt the same way where I was like, you know what? This dude gave me so much that I hope to a certain degree I can help or give back to uh, this, you know, next generation of kids who hopefully will do a bunch of cool stuff and will be as successful as they are or whatever. And um, I think he very much a lot of what I do now with working with people um, and like a lot of it's not even, you know, I'm not coaching these people. I just talk to them, see where they're at. I'll give them pep talks or whatever, things I enjoy. Just hang out with them. Uh, I think a lot of that I get from Sean. The last person who was not my coach, but who had a massive impact was Zach Schneider. And that night at Mile High, when we were playing Mario Kart with Zach, uh, Zach also chimed in when Sean said he thought we could win nationals. And more importantly, Zach was like, okay, well, what are you doing to beat Berkeley? Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, you know, I've got this file or whatever. And he's like, well, then let's look at it. And I just got to sit down with Zach for like an hour or two and just work through this file. And just like everything he thought was wrong with the position they were reading at that point, he was sitting there with me going through. And, you know, this is a guy who is in similar to Sean, but like he's coaching people who compete directly against me. But he was going out of his way to help me succeed. And obviously anyone knows Zach knows that he just, he cared about everyone and he cared about the debate community so much. But like, Zach went to SIU and when I was at DVC and didn't know anything about national circuit debate, all I knew was SIU is the best ever. Like all the SIU dudes are like my favorite debaters other than Allie. And so the fact that this dude who had like won the national championship with Josh Rivera and who, you know, was at, in my mind at that point, like the best judge in the country and just like this flowing robot and just so smart and thoughtful about debate, but also so caring. And so, giving even though he was doing like a tech job and everything the fact that he was willing to go out of his way to help me was uh really special and i think about that uh, a lot and i thought about that a lot also obviously when zach passed earlier this year which was hard on everyone uh, and still is hard but i'm thinking about it more and more because the last time i saw zach was in uh i want to say september or august and he happened to be out in the Bay Area and he just posted on Facebook and I was like, hey, dude, you want to get dinner? And he said, yeah. And so we went, I took him out to pizza and all we did was talk about debate, <laughs> um, which is very common for when I hang out with debate people, right? You know, you can talk about life or whatever, but like when you're really, really into the game, like that's just what you do. You talk about debate. And we talked about, you know, this year and we we're like, okay, well, who do you think could win? Or like, is anyone going to finally beat Berkeley and so on and so forth? And kind of where's your money at? And uh, he, you know, he felt that he's like, well, you know, I think that uh, McKendry's team's got, got a shot at it, obviously. He's like, you know, I'm coaching them and work with them and stuff. But uh, he also told me that the person he thought could do it was uh, one of my former students, you know, Matt at DVC. And he thought that Matt and his partner were very good. And he thought that especially working with Adasia, they would have a really good shot at doing it. And those are like, he's like, those are the two teams. He's like, they're going to do it. Maybe Oregon will do it right. But he, he really believed uh, in Matt. Uh, and to me, that was, you know, awesome because I'm like, hey, you know, I kind of helped that kid at one point or whatever. And, and it's always good to hear that. But the reason it was so cool to me is like just hearing someone who you respect so much talk about someone who you helped in some capacity um, just feels good because it's like, OK, I guess maybe I did something and other people see something in this person that I also see in them and, and think they could accomplish and, and do great. Uh, and you know, I I think if I had actually given my thank yous, I would have spent more time thinking about it and I would have written it out and would have had all these thoughts and would have cried more. But I think the the big point for me is just that I wish there were more opportunities in debate to be thankful, like publicly thankful in like a way that's cool. 
And I think that's something we could do better. But given that that's not really the case, I think one of the big things I would tell to all the people who will still be competing on day three is obviously don't get too wrapped up in the thank yous. You got rounds to win, you got bouts to get, all that kind of stuff. But do try and really reflect on who helped you and who you would want to thank. And make sure that those people know. Because a lot of the time, I think that in debate, we are all, you know, it's a small community and we're, we're connected in some ways, but we inherently have competition with a lot of people. And so it's very easy to forget that all of these people in the community help you grow in a certain way. And some people really go out of their way to do that more so than others. Um, I don't have anything else other than that. I just want to talk about thank yous. I wanted to say that obviously um, I, everyone knows who I'm pulling for, I hope. But uh, good luck to all of those kids, um, whether that's my former students at Pacific or whether that's, you know, Matt and Kyle at SDSU or that's Oregon at Oregon. Um, thanks so much for letting me share like a little bit of time with you folks. And uh, I couldn't get it done. I learned how to not win the national championship a lot of ways, but I sincerely hope that uh, one of you folks manages to pull it off and, uh, you know, Afterwards, I hope you give back to other people because I think that's a really important part of what we have to do in the space. Thanks so much for all the help you've given me. Thanks so much for all the help you've given my students this year. All of you have in some way like helped DVC out and that means the world to me and um, good luck and go get them. Talk to you later. <laughs>